Uh, aloha, my name is Navaha Napoleon and I teach Hawaiian language and I'm also the department chair for languages, linguistics and literature at Kapi'olani Community College. Hi, I'm Anthony Silva. I am a faculty member in the languages, linguistics and literature department and I was project lead for the D2P project at KCC. Hi, my name is Louise Pagato and I serve as Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at the college and I'm the administrator overseeing the project. So the name of our project was Aeva. That's Aeva, which means to have a genealogy. And so basically what we saw the DQP as being was how do we as faculty or instructors um, create a genealogy of learning for our students. And really when we looked at the DQP, that's how we saw it, that the knowledge and the skills that we were imparting to our students would later on become part of their genealogy and we as instructors would belong to their genealogy. So example, 10 years or five years from now when they're putting in a CV or resume, the CV would really reflect our college and we would then become part of their genealogy for their future. So uh, one of the words we looked at while doing the DQP was imua. So if you could say that, it's imua. And there's two meanings to imua. One is to move forward, and the other meaning is anything that happened before. So the way we perceive the word imua is that we move to the future with our back face to the future and our eyes looking at the past. So basically the way we started the DQP was that we had to make sure that we honored the faculty and all the things that they have already planted. So all the competencies that they've written or the SLOs they've written for their courses, honored it and slowly what we did was we began planting the DQP in what they have already done. So um, moving forward, what we did was we used the word imua. Again, it means to move forward, and it also looks at everything that's come before. OK, so um, our project at the our DQP project at KCC involved uh, one main project team consisting of four members. We had Colette Higgins, who was a chair for Arts and Humanities Department, Nava Anapolian, who you've already met, Charles Sasaki, uh, Dean of Arts and Sciences, who was our administrative liaison, and me, Anthony Silva. And going forward, we're adding our Vice Chancellor, Luis Pagado, whom you've already met, and also Lori Burke, faculty member in Hospitality and Tourism Department, and the assessment coach for career and technical education programs. And of course, we'd also like to thank all of the participants who made the project possible, um, our faculty members. So our project at KCC involved mapping and aligning our general education outcomes and some course outcomes to the DQP outcomes in the context of the AA and Hawaiian Studies degree. Our project consisted of two main phases. The first phase was mapping. So in mapping, we were trying to make connections between the DQP and our general ed outcomes using a matrix. And at first, our four-member DQP team mapped the DQP outcomes to KCC's general education outcomes. We then put together a task force that reviewed and revised these mappings. And then uh, we had some lead faculty map their course competencies, which is what we call our course-level SLOs to the DQP outcomes. The second phase was the alignment phase, and in the alignment phase, we tried to revise some of the wording of our outcomes in order to create a closer alignment with the DQP. So we started with our task force, and our task force aligned the general education outcomes to the DQP outcomes, and then we had our lead faculty work on their course competencies to align them to the DQP outcomes. So first, I'd like to talk about our general education student learning outcomes, both mapping and alignment. At KCC, we have five general education outcome areas, thinking and inquiry, communication, 
self and community, aesthetic engagement, and integrative learning. Our DQP team initially mapped the DQP to our KCC outcomes in this way. For example, for our thinking and inquiry outcome, there were four outcomes in the broad knowledge category of the DQP that aligned with the thinking and inquiry outcome, three intellectual skill outcomes, two applied learning outcomes, and three civic learning outcomes. And you can see the other alignments for our other four general education outcomes. The task force then revised these mappings and made them a little bit more robust but still covering all of the areas of the DQP with all of the areas of our general ed, ed outcomes. So for our one of our outcomes, a thinking and inquiry outcome, the faculty members didn't change the wording very much of this outcome, but they did align some of the specific outcomes of the DQP. For example, under broad knowledge, outcomes three, four, and five. So if you look at the DQP brochure created by Lumina in 2011. If you look at the list of the outcomes, they're in order, although they're not numbered. So for example, broad integrative knowledge, number three, four, and five. Uh, number three is illustrates core concepts of the field while executing analytical, practical, or creative tasks. Number four, selects and applies recognized methods of the field in interpreting characteristic discipline-based problems. And five, assembles evidence relevant to characteristic problems in the field, describes the significance of the evidence and uses the evidence and analysis of these problems. Okay, so those are just some examples. For our communication outcome, the task force modified the language of the outcome slightly. And we can see the alignments of the specific DQP outcomes for broad knowledge, intellectual skills, applied learning, and civic learning again by the numbers. Our self and community outcome was also modified a little bit to more closely, more closely align with the DQP. An interesting thing happened with our aesthetic engagement outcome. The task force felt that it wasn't necessary to have its own category or its own outcome. And they collapsed it into the integrative learning outcome by adding an aesthetic component to that general education outcome. Okay, next the course competencies. So these are the mappings for our course competencies. So we had 28 courses that map to the broad knowledge outcome area, 32 courses to intellectual skills, 18 to applied learning, and 18 to the civic learning category of the DQP. And we can also see the number of competencies in those courses that were mapped. For course distribution, we tended to have a slight, to slightly favor intellectual skills and broad knowledge over civic learning and applied learning. This is a list of some of the courses that took part in the alignment activity. And then some examples. So from our English Composition uh, 1 course, we the faculty members added in some of the communication fluency skill of intellectual skills by adding in the grammatical accuracy portion at the end. So we can see the old or original competency on the left and the aligned competency on the right. Our history class combined two outcomes or two course competencies into one by adding in the perspectives area of broad knowledge outcome number two. Our geography course added in some civic learning components by adding in the contemporary and historical ideas. Our botany class added in some broad knowledge wording so that it considered two different perspectives. Our religion course added in a civic learning component or the civic learning outcome by including the origins, development, assumptions, and predispositions. Our music course added in intellectual skills of using information resources by adding in the citations wording. 
And our Hawaiian 101 class added in again communication fluency by adding in the error free communication wording. So as a result of the project, we, we came up with a few key takeaways. Uh, one of them was the tension between adapting and adopting. So faculty members uh, seem to feel that although adopting the statements of the DQP outcomes whole would be easier, adapting them would be a little bit more conducive to the college culture, which is connected to our second key takeaway. Uh, this helps to get faculty buy-in by continuing to use the items that we're currently using and just making them better. The importance of a collaborative dialogue among faculty. And the idea that in order to really affect um, change, we need to extend these DQP ideas to course level assignments. Going forward, we hope to honor the work of the DQP pioneers by expanding the application of DQP to other degrees, uh, the AA and liberal arts, but more explicitly to the degrees in the career and technical education programs where we hope that the DQP, especially DQP 2.0, will help us to align and map general education outcomes across all of these programs. And again, we look to the future, which is the expansion of DQP with our eyes on the past work of the faculty. Thank you. If you'd like to get any more information about our project, then please contact me at silva at hawaii.edu. Let me thank you for your time.